Hey everyone, so by now you've probably heard me use the term lizard brain. So today I want to explain what I mean by that. I want to show you how it might be running your life and if so, what to do about it. Though it's a little bit of an oversimplification, our lovely, amazing human brain has undergone three stages of evolution to get to where it is today. There's an early reptilian part, a mammalian part, and then our current human part. Rather than reinvent the wheel, these earlier components of our brain were built upon because they had some really distinct advantages for us. Today I'm going to be mostly talking about the reptilian brain or lizard brain as I like to call it. And that's the oldest part. This part of our brain is reactive, it's really fast, and it's really concerned with our survival. Which is awesome because if you're about to step out in front of an oncoming bus, you want lightning fast reflexes getting you back on that sidewalk as fast as possible. When your brain detects threat, it releases chemical messengers like cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and these help us with responses like focus and attention and alertness and it helps us mobilize our energy source so we can go ahead and, and either fight or run away from whatever's after us. And this is all fine and dandy if you've got a lion chasing you. You want to be able to think fast, move fast and get to safety. And then the lizard brain goes, kind of moves back into the background and lets the body and brain come back into this homeostasis, this rest and restore mode. Or at least this is how our brain is supposed to work. What's happening in our lives today is our lizard brain feels like everything is a threat. Things like deadlines at work, worrying about money or our kids, and all these things are interpreted by our lizard brain as life or death situations, which incidentally is why our brain likes to spin and spin and spin on all these things that we're worried about. It's these brain chemicals that are forcing our attention on this problem. So what ends up happening is that our bodies and our nervous systems feel like they're in this state of constant fight or flight or collapse from all of this stress. What a lot of people don't know, however, is when the safety system of our brain is activated, when it feels like there's a threat, it can actually hijack our sophisticated human brain, which should be the control center of our brain. When this part of our brain feels like our life is in danger, our higher level or executive function part of our brain goes offline. And this means that when we're stressed, not only are we reactive, you know, saying or doing things that we might regret later, it means it's also impossible to problem solve, to think things through calmly or to see the bigger picture. And you don't need me to tell you that not only is this not a fun place to live, it absolutely wreaks havoc, havoc on our bodies. Nearly all of our chronic health conditions are either caused by or made worse by stress. So what do we do about it? So the exercise that I'm going to teach you today is playful and relaxing, but it's an incredibly powerful tool for my gentle trauma rewiring program. So step one. Whenever you catch yourself all up in your stress hormones, worrying about a family member, stressed about work, uh, depressed about your relationship, I want you to playfully say to yourself, I see you lizard brain. And what's great about being a little playful or a little silly is that it's unexpected and it helps shake your brain out of the little rut that it's in and that helps create the environment to prime the brain for some really great rewiring and restructuring. Then you want to keep talking to your lizard brain by saying, thank you for looking out for me. I know you feel that this is a life or death situation, but this is not a life or death situation. So it's okay for you to relax. If it's helpful, you can even imagine talking to a, a little scared lizard and trying to reassure them and calm them down. The last step then is to come up with some way to really reinforce to your body and your nervous system that it is safe to relax. You might already have some sort of tool that you like using that will quickly sort of bring some peace and some calm to the system. But if not, you could try things like long, slow breathing, looking out a window, cuddling with your dog or cat. Um, or my favorite is to just close my eyes and remember and think back to a time when I was in a really peaceful setting in nature and just think about what I was experiencing at that time, what I saw, what I felt on my skin, what I heard, what I smelled, 
And that really brings a lot of calm and peace to my system really quickly. But you can play around with whatever works for you. This doesn't have to be a long process, just long enough that you can feel some downshifting in the body. But I encourage you, if you have the time, to kind of get that deeper level of relaxation, maybe spend five or ten minutes there, I absolutely encourage you to do that. And you'll find probably the more stressed you are, the longer it takes to really bring that body down. So do your best to just work that into your day the best that you can. There's several huge benefits to this practice. Firstly, you get to come down out of stress and anxiety mode. It's kind of like a little mini holiday, which then lets your body come down out of fight, flight, freeze, and into rest and repair mode. Your wise human brain comes back online and you can likely start seeing solutions to your problems. Quite likely you'll see your communication and your relationships starting to improve. But the biggest benefit is that you'll start forming new neural pathways in your brain. So over time, your default setting will no longer be stress, anxiety, reactivity, but rather you're going to start feeling resourced and resilient in the face of future stress. So that's the practice this week. Interrupt that lizard brain, replace those stress chemicals with nice, happy, peaceful chemicals. And just like building a new muscle, retraining your brain takes time, it takes practice, requires repetition, but I promise you it's a thousand percent possible. So let me know what you think of this week's practice down in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.